The Rwanda genocide was a mass killing that occurred in 1994 in Rwanda, a small country in Central Africa. The genocide resulted in the deaths of an estimated 800,000 Tutsi and Mudra Hutu people in a span of just 100 days, making it one of the most devastating genocides in modern history. In the early 1990s, Rwanda, a small nation with a primarily agricultural economy, had one of the highest population densities in Africa. Approximately 85% of the population was Hutu, while the remaining individuals were Tutsi, along with a small number of Twa, an indigenous pygmy group. Significant social hierarchies existed between the Hutu and Tutsi communities. The Tutsis had a strong pastoralist background which afforded them social, economic, and political advantages over the Hutu, who were predominantly agriculturalists. Despite this, they were able to live together harmoniously, to the extent that it was difficult to distinguish one's ethnicity due to intermarriage and the shared language. In general, Tutsis were tall and light-skinned, while Hutus were short and dark-skinned. During the colonial period, Germany and later Belgium introduced a system that categorized Hutus and Tutsis based on physical features, hence solidifying their ethnic identities. Germany, which began colonizing Rwanda in 1898, maintained the Tutsi ruling class and monarchy through an indirect governing approach. After World War I, Belgium took over the colony and maintained indirect rule under the supervision of the League of Nations. The power imbalance and mistreatment of Hutus compared to Tutsis fueled long-standing tensions and allowed the minority to oppress the majority, resulting in violence that predated Rwanda's independence. After the Hutu rebellion in 1959, many Tutsis fled Rwanda, and by early 1961, the Hutus had taken control and established Rwanda as a republic. In July 1962, Belgium granted Rwanda independence following a UN referendum, yet ethnic violence persisted, leading to Major General Juvenal Habyarimana's ascent to power. Habyarimana founded the National Revolutionary Movement for Development NRMD political party and ran opposed, winning the presidential elections of 1978, 1983, and 1988. In 1990, Tutsi refugees formed the Rwandese Patriotic Front OPF and invaded Rwanda from Uganda. Habyarimana accused Tutsi residents of supporting the OPF and ordered government officials to slaughter hundreds of Tutsis between 1990 and 1993. Eventually, a ceasefire was negotiated between the government and the OPF in 1992, which allowed Hutus and Tutsis to share power in the government through a peace agreement. However, extremist Hutus, opposed to the agreement, armed Houthi paramilitary groups and initiated a vicious propaganda campaign against Tutsis. On April 6, 1994, the plane carrying Houthi President Juvenal Habyarimana and Burundian President Cyprian N. Turimira was shot down. The party responsible for firing the missile is still a matter of debate. But it provided a pretext for Houthi extremists to carry out a systematic campaign to eliminate Tutsis and Madurat Hutus in Rwanda. The country's highly structured society, from district to government, facilitated the ruling party's youth wing, the Interahamwe, to become a militia that distributed weapons and hit lists to local groups, urging them to kill Tutsis and moderate Hutus. Hutu extremists spread hate propaganda through radio stations and newspapers, encouraging people to weed out the cockroaches, a derogatory term used to refer to Tutsis, and calling for their extermination. The genocide began with the killing of the opposing Houthi Prime Minister and ten Belgian peacekeepers, and quickly spread across the country. Local leaders called upon Hutus to kill their Tutsi neighbours, which led to the brutal killing of entire families, including Tutsi wives by their Houthi husbands. ID cards with ethnic identities made it easier for militias to set up roadblocks and target and kill Tutsis. The killings were brutal and indiscriminate, with victims hunted down in homes, churches, and other places of refuge, even by priests and nuns. Tutsi women were systematically and brutally raped. The genocide resulted in the deaths of up to 800,000 Tutsis and moderate Hutus, with hundreds of thousands of Rwandan Hutes participating in the killings. After the Tutsi-led Rwandan Patriotic Front overthrew the Hutu government, the genocide came to an end, and a new government was established with a focus on reconciliation, economic recovery, and equal rights. Those accused of participating in the genocide were primarily tried in various courts, such as the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda ICTR, national courts, and local Gekoka courts. Some suspects were also tried in other countries. To speed up the prosecution of suspects within Rwanda, Gekoka courts were set up, and dozens of former regime officials were convicted of genocide. Unfortunately, as many as 10,000 individuals died in prison before they could face trial. 
In the midst of the Rwandan genocide, the United Nations and Belgium both had troops in Rwanda, but neither had the authority or mandate to intervene and put an end to the violence. The United States, which had recently suffered the loss of its troops in Somalia, opted not to become involved in another African conflict. Following the killing of 10 Belgian peacekeepers, most United Nations peacekeepers and Belgian troops left Rwanda. The French, who had been allies of the Houthi government, dispatched a special force to evacuate their citizens and set up a safe zone, but were criticized for not doing more to halt the mass killings. Today, Rwanda is still recovering from the trauma of the genocide, and efforts are being made to promote reconciliation and healing between the Hutu and Tutsi communities. The government has also made significant investments in education, healthcare, and economic development, which has helped to improve living conditions in the country.